I love this room in particular because you see all the covers from all the different eras and it really gives you a sense of the huge legacy that Vogue has had over a hundred years. It has it's just a fantastic archive of treasures to draw on. But I think we really wanted to start with what's happening now mm -hmm. uh, and then take you back through the length of galleries, decade by decade, right back to 1916 when Vogue starts. Yeah. So it's a sort of reverse chronological journey. great that the exhibition starts here with Moving Image and it's so interesting to acknowledge that magazines now are no longer just about still images but Moving Image is, is just as integral into yeah. Vogue yeah. and um, why did you decide to do it that way? Well I think, I think you've more or less said it's very, I think it's very very important because Vogue is alive and well, it's doing as well as it ever has, um, that, we, that we start with what's happening now. And I think what's incredible about it is that it has Bruce Weber, Alistair McClellan, Tim Walker, Tyrone yeah. LeBond, all these all, the um, great names. all these great yeah. names that are hanging on the walls there and they're also yeah. making film. This is the new way of disseminating fashion photography. We've yeah. still got it um, as still images on the page, yeah. but how great that um, photographers now have these extra skills that they make these films and this is a great way of, of promoting uh, fashion photography, which is what? you know, Vogue has been about since 1916. One person in particular that keeps reappearing um, in the exhibition is Tim Walker. His career is, is super interesting because he actually started at British Vogue from graduation, right, didn't he? He started as a teenage intern in the Vogue Library and I was working there at the time. He was sort of sent down and we thought what on earth are we going to give this really nice well-mannered kid to do in a suit. He was just absolutely charming uh, and we decided that uh, we would set him the task of recataloguing our Cecil Beaton negatives and which he did. Yeah. One gets the feeling when you look at Tim's pictures that maybe some of that Cecil Beaton uh, you know, sort of fairy dust rubbed off on him because he does do you know, he, 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 the sort of fashion fantasy, the fairy tales, the narratives that he spins, you know, do owe a lot to, to Vogue's photography of the past. There's a lot of Alistair <clears throat> McClellan in the exhibition. There's something so English about yeah. his work, Absolutely. and he's so obsessed with youth culture, Absolutely. and I think he's really captured a lot of our most, most youthful shoots in the magazine. Oh, definitely. But for me, it feels like it's, it's early Bailey. It's, he, he, you can see a line that takes us from the sort of gritty 60s up through to now. And I think that sort of is based on naturalness, a fondness for people, and a, and a great sense of place. Well, listen, in this room we also have tons of Mario Testino. We do. He's That's done right. some of our, you know, some of our most memorable covers. Absolutely. And yeah. even shooting, you know, the Prince of Wales. Absolutely. And um, he's great at both portraits and fashion. Uh, uh, ideal for the National Portrait Gallery, in other words, uh, when it meets Vogue. So this shoot was really incredible because it was Alex Shulman commissioned this in 1993. The shoot was like a huge controversy when it came out and it was a lingerie shoot and um, she was very kind of wafy and it was a real contrast of the supermodels that were around at the time like Absolutely. Cindy Crawford and Incredible Claudia Schiffer. Contrast. So people were like, oh my god, this is like, she looks like, you know, she's on drugs, yeah, it's yeah. like child pornography exactly. and there the was all this, yep. you know, a big hoo-ha in the press. I, th I think people thought the photographs were fascinating and interesting, it just, it chimed at the, at the same moment as uh, Stephen Meisel had done a, a shoot, I think, for Italian Vogue, and it had right. been, um, the, the words heroin and chic were first used, I think, in the same sentence together. People were, were worried, I mean, quite rightly some of the time, to, to worry about sort of body consciousness and, um, uh, and, and the aesthetic at play. But I, I think it's undeniable, and I know you'll agree with me, they're just the most fantastic. Uh, pictures and I think you know Kate just looks wonderful yeah, and she was a young gawky schoolgirl that's what she looked like. Karen's photography in a way 
really sort of resonates with what's going on now in photography. Yeah, yeah, I and there agree. was a real documentary thing mm -hmm. about it. Um, there was a real realness. And yeah. I think that whole reality into fashion yeah. was a real new thing in the 90s and became Absolutely. popular. And, and then it went away for a bit. And I think it's coming back mm. with a lot of the younger photographers shooting on film and, and you know, less retouching. Absolutely, the real thing. In this room, we've got one of my all-time heroes, Lee Miller, yeah. who, um, whose entire career started off at the very, from the very beginning with Condé Nast, literally yeah. her being saved. And literally Condé Nast, yeah. Literally mm. Condé Nast, the publisher of Vogue, yeah. um, saved her from a moving vehicle yeah, on the streets on the of Manhattan. Of Absolutely discovered her, made her a model. Yep. She immediately started uh, modeling for Vogue in the sort of yep. 20s, I believe. And yep. then um, and then she went to Paris and was the apprentice for Man Ray, Absolutely. as well as his muse and also lover yep. and collaborator. And, um, and then later on, she returns in the pages of Vogue yep. as a war correspondent. In the most unexpected way. In 1939, if you'd asked the editor then, you know, did, would you think that by the end of the war you would have a photographer that took you first, the first photographer through the gates of the death camps of Dachau and Buchenwald. She's there at Berchtesgaden when the SS have just set fire to Hitler's Alpine retreat. She has beaten Iron Michael Daniel's uh, infantry division by a couple of hours. She gets a tip off, she gets in her Jeep with David Scheinerman. Yeah, she, she, she goes there, she gets the scoop. She she's way serious. ahead of the army. The SS are just up there, I mean literally yards it's, away. It's and she's taking the photograph. And you can even see, even in pictures like that, you can almost see her influence in the surrealist oh, movement. Oh, that surrealist eye on those, absolutely. I think it's a tremendous picture. You know, Vogue does report on extraordinary yeah. no, that, I mean, the things that happen in our lives. Good I mean, I think what's interesting is about how war in general, you know, it's really a part of British Vogue and its legacy. And actually, yeah. it was created in 1916 uh, because in of war. the at war. The, yeah, at the height of the war, 1916, yeah. We weren't That's able to get um, Vogue, which had originated in America, it couldn't yeah. be sent over to Europe anymore. On import, yeah. Because couldn't of be World War One. Yeah, because of, yeah, and, threat um, to shipping. And so then British Vogue was born out of yeah. war. No, it is extraordinary. Vogue's artists were so inventive. So um, creative. And they do such extraordinary, I mean, I know you, you do it so beautifully now with, with, with uh, manipulating the logo. And, That's and, what I love. I mean, it's, it's just the freedom to do it's that. It's so you know, incredible. Vogue constellation. The, vo the logo, the Dido logo that we use now, yeah. it didn't exist. No, I mean, absolutely. Vogue was just the word. And yeah. so every month there was a new Something logo. Else. I mean, it's a wonderful one where it's, it's been made out of rope and you know, there's yes. somebody standing, drawing it in, in, in the sky. Magazines were never designed to, you know, you, you read them and then you sort of put them away. And so there are very, very few uh, remaining copies of these early years in existence. I mean, not because, that's because we're just thrown away, but because the paper's so brittle, it sure. disintegrates. Yeah. Um, and I'm thrilled we've got the very first issue of Vogue. In fact, we've got one from every year of its 100-year existence. It's our way of you know, celebrating what you guys do. I mean, art direction and uh, the creative direction the magazine takes is, 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 is a huge um, uh, contribu contribution to its, its, its success over the years. And it's great to be able to, uh, to, you know, to see Vogue in action as an object itself. Fashion photography is not just about clothes, is it? No. I mean, it's all, you know, it's very much about people as well, the people that wear them, uh, the people that take the photographs, yeah. the people that make the photographs happen. And it's great because I also feel like in this day and age, behind the scenes doesn't really exist anymore. Right. You know, the photographers sort of became known and then the models exactly. became supermodels. They all had a name, but now it's about the makeup artists, oh, yeah, completely. the stylists. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. all of these people are superpowers just, in the industry absolutely. and they're all as much yeah. in the forefront as each other. Something's lost in the midst of time. But I think for the most part, we've been able to give a name to, to most of the people that shaped Vogue's century.